Today we're going to show you how to make a mallet, also known as a baton. So one of the things that we're going to need for our baton is obviously a piece of wood. And uh, as I've never made a really large one, I think we'll make a comically large one today. So this is several fist size large. And uh, it's going to take a minute to get through it. But uh, I think we're going to give this a go just for fun. We'll be here sawing for a minute. So the uh, saw's starting to bind up on itself, just being kind of deep down in here. So we're just making a little bit of a wedge here. Now, funnily enough, by complete accident, we have forgotten, as things goes, our axe in a chair or something to sit on. So I emptied my bag out and I'm sitting on my bag. And uh, I guess we'll be doing this whole process with a knife. So first things first is we'll take off the bark and we can save this as it is very good material for bird nest bow drill fives. You can see this really papery stuff in here. It's real good. So we'll save that. And today we're going to be giving the Lossy Forge Puko a run for its money. If it can do this, I pretty much trust it with just about anything. <laughs> First order of business, what we need to do is we need to decide where our head's going to be. Since we already got a split out here, I think we'll keep our head at this end. And we need to decide how big of a piece we want our mallet baton head to be. Um, we're going to start off quite large because you can always carve it down and uh, remove more so we're going to need to make a saw kerf cut going all the way around as even as we can make it now how deep this is going to be is going to be completely up to you i also recommend wearing gloves which we also forgot so we we'll just have to be careful with our cuts keep your hand a safe distance away start off your cut slowly now the depth of your cut you're going to want to decide how thick you want your handle side to be. So for me, having a medium to small size hand, or fingers anyway, um, we're gonna make this pretty deep, going all the way around. We'll probably start with the, the depth of this saw blade. So we'll saw down till we get to the desired uh, length. And you gotta remember that this is curved, so it's gonna cut a little deeper so you set your tip of your blade in there and see how it disappears. To kind of keep it stable since I don't have a vise, I'm using my hand on one side, my foot on the other. Now on a bigger piece like this, it's going to be a little harder to get that cut perfectly straight all the way across. And we'll fix that in the carving section process of this. This being a softwood baton, it won't last too long anyway. Kind of a disposable tool you make it last as long as you can and uh get a new one they're a fun project to do and they don't especially if you're doing a small one like this it don't take any time at all so you can do that on your lunch break all right once you got your uh cut all the way around you can kind of go around and check the depth and adjust spots pretty close to equal all the way around as equally as we're gonna get it all right it's officially time to get started removing pieces so how we're gonna do this is we're just gonna take a little bit off at a time since we already kind of got a natural starting point here where this split off after uh sawing it this will be a good natural point for us to start here so to start off you're gonna to wanna to take smaller chunks at a time, just what it can handle easily. So you don't put too much stress on your blade. So it might take a little bit of work without an ax, but you'll get there and you'll see that generally if it's a dried wood, it'll split pretty easily all the way down to your cut. You can turn that into a nice little wedge or just some firewood. Now we're gonna follow that all the way around. 
Kind of get you an aerial view here. See, we're not taking much off at a time here. Just what we absolutely know the blade can handle. Once it's smaller, we'll be able to take off bigger chunks going down to be able to get, because it's kind of splitting off at a direction like this instead of straight down into the curve where we need to be. But we'll be able to fix that in just a bit. If you think your knife can't handle it, or you don't got a big enough blade, you can take one of the pieces you knocked off and use it as a wedge. Now doing a small size baton like this, this knife would be absolutely no problem. This is no problem. It's just gonna take a bit longer. To better save the resource of our knife, you can start the split a little larger to where the knife can't kind of really be batoned through. Take your blade out, put in a safe area, and switch over to using these as a, a wedge to split them. I'm gonna carve that to the point where it'll fit in there nicely. That'll do, hopefully. And a lot of times you'll end up breaking this quite a bit. You can see that's pretty effective though. Instead of taking all day to get around with your knife, start off the biggest split you can. You can see they're kind of breaking out little wedges already. There you go. That was a nice one. You got to be careful because these edges get sharp and just took a piece of my knuckle off there. Really good to use gloves when doing this kind of work. It's in kind of a hurry today and that'll show you what being in a hurry will do to you. All right, so you just keep chipping away at it until you get where you need to be. Now you see once we remove some pieces that we're getting better chunks off of it. And you can use this for bow drill, boards. If they're too thin, you can even stack them together. Anyway, now what I was saying about these, uh, since they're soft wedges, they're gonna get chewed up quite a bit. So just keep carving them down to get a, a better new edge that can work for you. There you go. That's a pretty big chunk we're trying to take off there. So I'm gonna back this knife out and use the wedge. Use the, keep the tip in there real quick so we can get our wedge seated. Just be careful around that blade. Always set your blade off in a safe direction. You can always start a second wedge in there too. Look at that. Sometimes you might have taken off a little bit more than you can chew than your uh, split might have been. Kind of just got to work at it till you get it off. Kind of see down in there. Might not have had a deep enough cut. And sometimes it's just putting too much pressure at the pinch point right there. You see it kind of split off farther on that side than it did on that side. So we'll try to Seat this wedge in there and get it out. You can see it's slowly starting to pop out of there. You might have to hit pretty hard. There we go. Boom. Now that's unfortunate. So we did go farther than our cut. We ended up taking a piece of the mallet off there. So we'll, uh, We'll have to adjust the mallet head and do a bit more carving than we wanted to do, but that's okay. Sometimes when you don't have all the tools you need, you make little mistakes like that. Or you could just keep a flat-sided hammer. That'd be pretty cool too, I suppose. But now you can see in here how far we came in with our cut. So we're pretty, we're pretty close to even on both sides. Close enough. But now we can see how far we can put in our blade from the edge here. That's a good visual representation right there. 
our cut's gonna stop right about there, so we'll try right about here. Look at that. Now you can see, once you get some of this diameter out, it'll split off a little better. I'm not really sure what kind of wood this is. I do know it's a softwood, which makes this... Now you can see that this uh, baton's getting pretty chewed up. It's an old, pretty dried piece of softwood. You see how that likes to split now? Now that we're in, in a bit. Go ahead and take our knife out of there so we don't jack it up needlessly. We're getting that situation again where we kind of maybe took off a little too much or it's pinching, which is what I think is happening right there. So split off farther on one end than the other. But you just reposition your wedge. There you go. Look at that. All right, we'll chip away at this and get back to you. Okay, now that we're kind of getting a lot closer to where we want to be, we're making adjustments. Like, I didn't want to overly split that one too far out until we make adjustments on the head. So we have a little bit of an issue there where it's kind of humping out. I'm going to teach you how to solve that right now. So you're going to take your knife and you're going to put on it in at an angle and then you're going to slowly rotate it in towards the piece of wood so it bites. And that way you can take off those humps that are forming. So we got one right there. So hammer in at an angle. Make it sure it got a good bite in there. I'll show you what that looks like. Keep pounding and then slowly twist towards the wood. And that will naturally want it to move downward towards the split. And this still works for your wedges too, watch. As long as you got enough room. To pound. Sometimes wood's stubborn and you just gotta work with it. Alright, so we've kind of gotten down to the end. Mostly of our saw kerf. Saw cut going around here. Now you gotta decide if that's as big as you want your handle. You can see it's still a little bit big for me. So what we'll end up doing is we'll saw a little bit more and take a little bit more off until it fits my hand the way I want it to. Now at this stage, you don't wanna take off too much. You just wanna do a little bit at a time. And I'm actually finding out that having this open face here to be able to see where my cut is inside the wood is actually extremely useful. Maybe I'll make that a future use, make a flat-faced hammer in the future, baton. All right, so now we're starting to get somewhere. So we're gonna make another little small cut and go ahead and keep chipping away at it. All right, now that we've shown you how far a knife can get, we can take it all the way with a blade, but it'll be a lot quicker and a lot easier to finish it off and to take a majority off with an axe and then finish with a knife. Got the uh, handle pretty close to where we want it. So we're gonna go ahead and, you can make this as fancy or as not unfancy as you want. Today we're just going pretty simple. We don't know how long this thing's gonna last. And over time, as you sit around camp, you can also make adjustments to it and you know put some decorations and stuff on it or whatever what have you so now we begin the process of slight thinning and uh, smoothing out this puka does a pretty good job overall it's still a little thick for hogging off a ton of material 
on a thick piece like this. But that's doing pretty good. Okay, I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts with y'all. Um, as I've made a few of these now, used a few and broken a few, um, a couple of things is when you do the handle, um, you want to keep it as big as you possibly can while fitting comfortably in your hand. Now this is still a mite too large for me, but I'm going to leave it here for today. And as I sit around camp, if I have the time, I will end up just thinning a little bit at a time. You can see a ton of small shavings here, just been a little bit at a time. Now, what you see I've done here, these feathers here, instead of cutting a groove all the way around, at this point, I've been kind of flaring it out. And I will just take the saw and barely knock those off, or you can take your knife and knock them off as well. But it leaves a better kind of joint at this meetup spot here and it's less likely to break as you're hammering if you have an undercut there it's more likely to break and i have broken exactly like that before now something you'll notice with wood is as you're carving you see this kind of like run out grain here if you carve in the opposite direction it'll kind of tear and rip out like that so you constantly have to be flipping your piece around to get a smooth cut that's not going to kind of jag out like that now another thing is you can see this has already started to split. This was a fresh cut on both ends. And you can see it's starting to split on both ends, which means, you know, we might not get as much as we wanted out of this. And that is because this was still wet just out of coming out of winter before we didn't let it dry or anything. And a couple things to mitigate that and to make things last longer is you can uh, put a handle like a paracord wrap down here to hopefully help stop the splitting obviously it's not going to stop that end so you might get more breakage than you you really want but uh just to finish off this project here um all you need to really do is chamfer you know make sure you got all the angles that you want and uh seeing as this is an experimental piece we're not going to take it too far and make it too fancy i've even I uh, cut a rim around here and made like a little handle before on several different models. But chamfering is we're just going to take the edge off on the top and the bottom here. And that'll help not have things split off as easy and fully have things last a little longer. You can see that there's been no real split out on this one here. It's just been chewed up from the back of that knife. I think chamfering helps immensely and uh, I do a kind of a two-step process here on the chamfering I do my initial chamfer around and then I'll come back and I'll hit that bottom piece there and the top piece and it makes it really rounded you can also do that with sandpaper or rasp or or anything but uh I'll do that in a minute and same same deal on top here I'll make that initial cut all the way around you can see that there and then I'll hit that piece in that those two different lines and round it out but you can see you kind of leave a little bit of a it looks messy but this kind of hill transition is a whole lot better than an abrupt stopped in my opinion uh, it won't look as pretty but I think it makes it a little bit stronger all right now it's starting to look more like a mallet eh so this chamfering process is the thing that makes it look a whole lot more like a mallet. Now I wanted to give you an example of what that kind of triple chamfer method looks like versus a straight edge versus just one swipe tra uh, chamfer, which is right there, this little piece. So you got one, which looks pretty clean what it would look like normal, and then what it looks like when you do this. Now remember, sharp edges are just splits waiting to happen. So the better and more time you spend on that, the more likely this piece is gonna last a lot longer. Now you wanna do all sharp edges. So I did this piece here too. This piece, don't forget the inside right here, all the way around. And uh, now we said, now we got ourselves here ridiculously. So I normally make stuff about this big or a bit bigger. I've made double this size. 
but <laughs> this one's pretty hefty compared to this. This is pretty light, like a few ounces, and you can carry this in your pack. And even though it's stupid lightweight, um, it does quite a bit of work. Now, this guy should be able to do some massive work. So the next video, we're going to be showing you the uses of what a mallet or a baton might have. So stick around. And thanks for watching.